This week on Canada in the Rough, we're after mountain goat and stone sheep in the mountains of BC. British Columbia, the word alone brings stunning mountain scenics to your mind. And this week, Keith Beasley will be tested as he and a group of BC resident hunters backpack up the mountains to go after the elusive mountain goat and stone sheep. This will be the first of a two-part series, and not only will the group encounter multiple animals, but they will struggle through 14 days of some of the hardest hunting on the planet. Accompanying Keith will be Chad Westbrook, Brent Tingstad, and also biologist Greg Blackburn. Greg is deaf, but he doesn't let that stop him from enjoying his passion for hunting. Over the years, Greg and Brent have enjoyed great successes in these mountains, and they bring a wealth of knowledge to the group. Tune in this week for the first part of this epic adventure in the mountains of British Columbia. Welcome to beautiful British Columbia. Look around me. We're in truly one of the most beautiful parts of the world. Here I am at Totoga Resort, ready to take off on our mountain goat stone sheep adventure in remote northern British Columbia. The team of guys have been planning for what seems like ever for this trip. For months, we've been training with 65, 70 pound backpacks on our back, walking big hills, walking some mountains for the BC boys that are here, and getting ready for 14 days on the mountain, searching these elusive mountain goats and stone sheep in remote British Columbia. We're finally here. Tomorrow morning, after a great supper and good sleep in the cabins here at Totoga, we're gonna get on North Pacific's plains and take us in and get off and search these big, big old goats and sheep. And we couldn't be more excited. It's finally here. It's gonna be a great hunt. Thanks for joining us. Let's get hunting. We've got a really healthy uh, population of mountain goats in British Columbia that are really underutilized by hunters. And uh, they're not really sought after like most people would think they are. But there are a few people that do appreciate the challenges of hunting mountain goats eh, in their environment. The habitat that they live in is usually very cliffy, steep, and just rugged. Typically, there's two groups of uh, mountain goats eh, when you're looking at eh, when you're up in the mountains. Eh, there's the family group which is uh, nannies, kids, and maybe young billies, eh? and they can number from a few to up to a hundred. The other group are billies, off on their own, maybe one by himself or maybe in Paris. And uh, they're quite easily distinguishable when you're hunting them. Eh? If they're walking across, they kind of remind myself like a buffalo going across, a eh? big shouldered, a bit of a hump and they've got a bit of a swag to them and just like just lumbering swag and uh, 
You have to be downwind of mountain goats, say, so they do not get wind of you. As soon as they get wind of you, especially for feeding mountain goats, uh, they'll just boat for the nearest escape train, which is usually the steepest and most rugged cliff habitat they can find. And they may stay there for days before they wander out again. After climbing for six hours, the group finally reached their first base camp location at 4,000 feet. Once the tents were set up, there was only time for a quick dinner and then to bed for the night. The next morning after base camp was packed up, the group continued their climb up the mountain and began the two days of scouting before the hunting season officially opened. Scouting is key in this environment. You have to be prepared to put on anywhere from six to 20 kilometers per day through very rough and steep terrain. Wearing quality gear and quality optics is a must on these hunts. Bunch of goats over Just here. Down there. Yeah, up on the ridge. Yeah, it seems to be about, uh, about nine or ten of them, a uh, family group. There's a lot of them up there. Yeah, all nannies and kids. Up feeding on that. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. There's a bear. Holy. Same spot. Come Grizzly right bear. Gri uh, holy. <laughs> He's chasing them. It's after the goats. Oh, look at them go. Right off that cliff. They just. That's unreal. chaos. Look at that. That is unreal. Chasing them right off the cliff. Uh, look at that. Oh, he's he looking to move. He split that herd on real. He split them up and he's going right back. Yeah, there's three on this side. Cool. Oh, he's coming back up. He's coming back up. He's going right back after them. Holy man. He's running right after those. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is unbelievable. Look how fast they're coming down off in line. Oh. There they go, eh? Looks like they all got away. They're all running off. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's amazing. That was amazing. Uh, just unreal. I thought it was a rock. Just right there, right? And then all of a sudden it just kept coming and then the goats. Well, when you said bear, I'm looking all of a sudden this right massive up. tank running is just coming out this white patch and they're just chaos. They split everywhere. But off the cliff, down the rocks. Yeah, yeah try to just disperse it, try to get away from it. Holy oh, cow. But the fact that Greedy came over the cliffs and just went right he down to the, the cliff. Yeah, it that just happened, happened so fast. fast. I think they all got away, but that was, to see a grizzly bear is amazing. To watch him chase his prey, that's incredible. Yeah, unreal. Oh my gosh, what a moment. Stop to often and see that every day. What a moment. Oh. Hunting in the mountains at 6,000 feet brings its fair share of difficulties and being prepared is key to survival and success. Everything from rain gear to warm weather clothing and quality footwear is a must. Not to mention a good map of the area you are in, a portable cooking apparatus along with highly nutritious dry food packages and a satellite phone. Whether you're calling home with good news or you need to get off the mountain in a hurry, a quality satellite phone is one investment you must make before venturing into this part of the world. Keith, I've got two goats here down below that peak down there. Can you get them on the scope, Brent? They look to be pretty good size there from here with the garden, say. What do you think, Brent? They look good, can't tell. Big horn lines they are from here, but they sure look mature. Big mature bodies. Well, the wind's pounding straight across. If we really get on that other ridge, oh, they and don't. get down around on that side of them, they're in, like, because that plateau's not a lot of climb. We cover a few kilometers there pretty quick. We can get there pretty quick once we get across this dog. Well, let's go make a move on them.
hiking six kilometers to the goats, Keith and Chad Westbrook, who also has a goat tag, pared down their gear and began the final stalk into these two mature billies. That hill. It's quartering away. He might crest that hill. I'm going to take him. Mine's walking uphill. He's walking steady up that dirt bank. Yeah, just wait. I'll whistle on him, Chad. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take him. Yeah, go. Nice shot, Chad. You got him. You got him. Leave him, leave him, Chad. You got him. Hold on. Hold on. You got him. You got him. Oh my gosh, buddy. <laughs> He's down. He's down. Two oh. big billy goats down. Oh man, that dude. Oh my goodness, man. We've chased those billies for eight kilometers. You know how far we're back in here? No, and people are gonna think we're in some weird world. It's sunny, it's cold, it's snow today. This morning in that rainy hill sitting on that tarp, we spotted these things, what, eight kilometers away on top of that mountain and they left put a stock on on the downwind side of them, and two beautiful mountain goats down. 200 yards away. Man, what a hunt, what nice a hunt. Shot, man. Now the fun part begins. <laughs> now we gotta get over there. We did it, we did it, we did it, we did it. We did it. Thank you, thank you. Right on, buddy. You had the best piece in the house. Oh. I can't wait to get my hands on this Billy. Big, Let's go, bad Chad. Billy. Let's go see this guy. Wow. Look at that, man. Oh, my goodness, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Look at that goat. I'm speechless. What a beautiful animal. Uh, look at those. Off the ring, Tom. Unbelievable. Eight plus year old goat chat. What a mature old British Columbia yeah, mountain goat. You know See, look at his horse face. Yeah, yeah, the long, the hump on the nose. Big, big, look at small ears with these big lands. Oh, he's gorgeous. Chad, congratulations. Incredible. Yeah, awesome. Congratulations. Good day. Good job. Let's go find another one. Let's go look at I think he's right here. Right there. Right there. Look at the size of this animal. This is a, these animals are beasts. Oh, we you know when we spotted him? He looked like a buffalo coming across the, the top of the mountain. Away. And look at these horns. He's a monster. How old is this goat? He's old. 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, 15 year old goat. He's so old. Unbelievable. I, I, I couldn't be happier. This is, this is a dream come true, guys. A dream come true for me. It's even more exciting if we get to spend the night here tonight. Yeah, I guess we're sleeping over tonight, right? Just just so everybody knows, this is hunting in the mountains. We're, we're eight kilometers from camp coming to hunt this guy today. It's dark in two hours. We got a lot of work to do on these two animals, so we'll be getting to work and uh, finding a ditch here, maybe laying the tarp over us and having some sleep. So we got some work to do.
Uh, Stone Sheep and uh, British Columbia are probably one of the most highly sought after trophies in North America. They are highly sought after by both residents and non-resident hunters that utilize the services of guide outfitters. Stone Sheep rams in particular in August, they have a tendency to favor north and northwest basin basins almost always. There's a lot of different variables they were not in Stone Sheep, uh, but the biggest thing is once you've located rams in a basin, I'd like to be really patient, watch the sheep, watch what they're doing, where they're bedding. You really got to watch the wind and really watch your own profile and your stock because uh, the stone sheep, they, they have tremendous eyes, a better eye than the person behind the spot and scope. As our 14 day BC mountain hunt continues, we pick up on day five the day after Keith Beasley and Chad Westbrook harvested their two mature mountain goats. After a long and cold night stranded on the mountain, everyone is finally back to base camp. Typical with most mountain hunts though, you must move to where the animals are. And today that means packing up base camp once again to go after the elusive and majestic stone sheep. a year and a half, two years old day when I lost my hearing. And uh, for the longest time, doctors thought it was uh, due to measles. But just recently, within the last few months, we found out it wasn't because of measles, eh, but uh, something to do with the uh, endolymphatic sac in the ear. I've uh, adapted quite well. I probably grew up at learning how to lip read. My parents they have been a really strong advocate for me to learn how to speak and uh, so I can communicate with people. From my personal standpoint, they, for the things I have done in my life, they, whether it's through education, through sports, through recreation, uh, hunting, for example, if you put your mind to do something, anything is possible. It may be in varying degrees of what you can do, but uh, it's not impossible. As the sun rose on day eight, the group packed their gear and made their way up the mountain once again. 
After eight days with little sleep, even less food, and a lot of physical energy exerted, the group was feeling the pressure, but they continued pushing themselves through the rough mountain terrain. After eight hours of hiking and glassing, they finally came across a band of stone sheep headed their way. After glassing the herd, they realized they would have to move quickly to cut them off and assess if the lead ram was in fact legal or not. Gotta be legal. Shaking points, you can't tell yet. I think we gotta go around. No, he's there. Did you see it? Did you see that view? Do you wanna go there? I think we gotta get back. They're going up the funnel. They're gonna be out of range. We gotta get to that point over there. We gotta go. He's there. Let's go. He's there. Okay, so that was a bit of a wild ride. It was, eh? Sheep hunting usually isn't that quick to make a decision. Those 10 rams came across from two kilometers away two kilometers and, we, and they had one way to go or the other. They looked like they were going our way. We ran all the way around. We got good footage of them coming up and then the last second they turned and busted the other way. Busted the other way, the probably off the hop, the dog went on the east side of the mountain, but uh, we'll just let them lay low for the night. Try and find them in the morning. Yeah, sheep hunting, you gotta yeah. be patient, right? So there's no point in forcing their hand. Yeah, so we'll go back at it tomorrow. First thing in the morning, we'll be up a sneak peek. Eh? That, was, that was exciting. Oh, yeah, it was good. Had my so heart one beat. Man, he looked pretty good, eh? But uh, he's you down, come way right back, wide. Come down, eh? He might be there in age, tough to call. Yeah. We were waiting for him to get closer to really make the final decision, but you know what? He's beautiful and he's real close. Oh, so, yeah. exciting hunt. Oh, exciting. It's no secret that you're way up here on top of the mountains and backpacking everything in that you have to pack light for food. When you got 14 days on the mountain and you need to eat and keep your energy up and your energy levels high, but yet you don't want to pack much food in, you got to think smart and do it right. But it is interesting to see what we've brought, how we've done it strategically and made it per day what we're allowed to eat. So this right here is 14 days worth of food. It's approximately 15 pounds of food and that is everything by the day. And if you look down beside me here, we got everything of what you get in your daily allotment. We have hard candies, two protein bars, usually one for breakfast, one for lunch. We have a couple pieces of jerky and 15 M&Ms, 15 M&Ms specifically. We got, uh, that's your meal, that's your hot meal. That's a dehydrated meal. This one happens to be beef stroganoff with noodles. We got spaghetti, lasagnas, and you literally boil water, pour those in every night, and that's your hot meal for the day. And then to help keep your energy up, you get, uh, one scoop of Gatorade every other day. So you'll see here that this is a quick view of what we're doing for 14 days on the mountain, but you don't want to be packing too much food, but you want to bring enough to keep your energy levels up, get the calories back in and give you the protein you need to keep going on these long hunts.
what are the things about that are going away? I probably this eleven thing I've gone away on a tweak, a backpack, sheep hunting mountains, and uh, not to mention all that you do in the fall time, right? And uh, one of the biggest things is you need to have a really good support system back home. And uh, one of the biggest things is uh, my wife, Belinda, and uh, she has been very supportive of my hunting habit, as it does take a lot of time away from home and family. And, uh, and if it wasn't for that, they wouldn't be out here having the opportunity that I do have to hunt. And, uh, a lot of credit and a lot of uh, thanks they go to my wife and family for that support. Sheep. There's two sheep coming way down, way off that mountain top. Yeah. Yeah, coming this way. Right there. They're gonna come right to this pinch again. They're taking the time and put them on the way down. Oh yeah. Just a matter of time before they get over here. Oh, there they are. They just popped back out of that drop. They're coming quick. They're coming. Oh yeah, we passed it. They're gonna be here pretty quick. They're coming right down that line off that hump. Oh my gosh, I think he does it. Still can't tell. What think that? One ram looks pretty close. It's hard to tell from this distance. Here's right side. Not sure if he's going to be old enough or not. He's definitely got something coming up. Wait till it gets a little closer. Yeah, he's got a little tight cool here on him. The other, yeah, the other, the other ram's not definitely not legal. No. Yeah, they're taking the same trail the sheep ate from yesterday. Yeah, they are coming fast. It's closely, but not there. I don't think it breaks his nose, and pretty sure he's only six. Only 200 yards, and I got it cranked up to 60 power. You can see pretty good. Gosh, it's definitely, definitely not legal. Beautiful sheep, though. Very pretty ram. Beautiful cape, bay. Yeah, he's a he's a nice six-year-old, but he's he's got enough horn to break the bridge of the nose. But he just he comes back on his horn. And he's uh, just comes back barrel to the eye socket. And he's just not getting out there. Oh, look at that! Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Outstanding. That's the emotional roller coaster of sheep hunting right there. Right there. Yeah. Right there. Today was a funny day. We've been watching these sheep work this saddle here. So we stayed close to camp. We actually got up on that rock hunt at the crack of dawn, watched, only seen a few in the distance. Come back here at nine to get packed up to go back up on the hill and watch them come all the way down through the valley and sat five, ten feet from the tent. Oh, yeah. And they come right through the valley to us. Yeah. But he was he was that close. Like, he had enough horn to do it. It just went the wrong way. So of straight up, it flipped back and come back by his eye. That was a beautiful pair of sheep. Beautiful ram. I lot another thing about a ram like that. Hey, when you watch him on the skyline, hey, a lot of guys would probably shoot him, hey, because he looks like a really legal flying ram. But when you walk up to him, he won't be. Well, that's, that's the ups and downs of sheep hunting, right? We yeah. just had an unbelievable hunting moment. It wasn't about the kill. It was about seeing those being right here with them, like, what, 150 yards? Right there. That was unbelievable. That was worth every bit of this trip, just to see that. You know, it's not every day you can come out into the middle of nowhere and enjoy the Canadian wilderness and its purest and finest form, the Canadian Serengeti, if you will the last frontier. Here we are, we're in the middle of nowhere and today is marks the end of our 14 day backpack journey in the mountains. An epic two part series where we mountain goat hunted and sheep hunted. We didn't get a ram, but that was not what it was about. It was about accomplishing goals, setting out and enjoying the journey. And that is what we did. It was about friendship, overcoming obstacles, 
mentally and physically preparing to accomplish 14 days in the wild. And that's what it was about. At the end, we gained some incredible friendships and memories that we'll tell stories about forever. And in the end, I gained a true hero in Greg Blackburn, a guy that spent his whole life overcoming obstacles. The epitome of perseverance. He's accomplished so many great things despite being deaf. He is a man that I look up to and a true advocate for us hunters and a hunting hero in my mind. If you haven't had the chance to come to British Columbia, you've got to do it. I'm Keith Beasley, your host for Canada Rough. Enjoy the greatness of Canada and be proud of your hunting heritage. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to this channel. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram for daily original content from our adventures across Canada.